we've been telling you about this all day. Facebook. Expected to go public on Friday, but does Facebook deserve such a lofty valuation? Time to bring out our panel. Marjorie Clifton is a national independent editor for GoVote.com in D.C. Carol Roth is a best-selling author and small business expert in Chicago. And Larry Wayne is right on set with us today, the best-selling author and really smart fella. <laughs> Larry, let's start with you. Well, you know, the market's going to determine whether it's worth it or not. I kind of like the whole Facebook thing. You know, two guys figured out how to do something. They created it. They put it out there, and it made a lot of money. And besides that, I'm a fan of Zuckerberg just because he took so much crap over his wardrobe last week. You I'm like a, the I'm a guy who takes a lot of crap over his wardrobe, so I'm takes there. takes a lot of crap over your wardrobe. Carol, we're not going to say anything about it. Carol, <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> oh, gosh, Jerry, I think we've gone past the point of fundamentals into emotion and investor psychology. And that holds up over the short term, but in the market, not over the long term. When Facebook comes out, it's going to be trading at north of D5 times revenue. To put that in perspective, Google and Apple trade in the neighborhood of five. The only thing that's going to sustain that is crazy high-flying growth. And they're coming off a quarter over quarter decrease. So, you know, they're saying seasonality. If you're that much of a high flyer, the word seasonality should not be in your vocabulary. This is a red flag for investors. Red flag. He's looking for the hoodie premium. He's not getting it. Marjorie, what do you say? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a big gamble. I mean, I survived the, the high-tech shakeout in Austin back in early 2000. There's a lot of delionaires still left standing and others who are you know, driving their jalopies. But, I mean, it's 25 times the value of their annual revenue. That's a little scary, especially kind of not knowing what exactly the product is. Look, how they're does, everywhere, how does this and there, you know, there's no barriers to entry, which is something sure. I always look at. Okay, mm -hmm. let's talk about Greece for a minute. Talk about debt on the verge of collapse, facing bankruptcy as early as next month. And yet the country announced it's giving up in its quest for a government calling for another round of elections instead, which many say will only produce another stalemate. Marjorie, what do you say? It's not looking like it's going to be a big, fat Greek bailout at this point. It, right now, uh, it, it, it's all this the polling is showing is this is increasing those who are opposing the austerity measures, which may mean that Greece is actually booted out of the EU. And it means that we should all be booking vacations to Greece because it means there's gonna, it's going to be a, a really inexpensive vacation. It's not a good sign. Not a good sign, but I don't know if they can keep the streets clean there. That's what no, I'm worried about. Carol, what do you say? No. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want to go on vacation to Greece. You know, they're going to be burning the streets down. That doesn't seem like a, a place I want to relax. Um, I, I think that you, you would think that Greece has hit rock bottom and it's clear that they haven't. And I just think that this is a huge warning for anybody who thinks that it's a good idea for the government to tell people we will take care of you instead of letting them take care of themselves. Eventually, the government's no longer able to do that, and this is what happens. And so hopefully we will all take from this. But I just don't know how Greece comes out of this. I think we're going to be talking about it's this for a long time to come, Jerry. It's a mess, Larry. Political deadlock over a debt crisis in the economy, and you just get to say, let's have a new election? Why didn't we do this three years ago? <laughs> and, and they're about to go bankrupt, and they get to have another. That sounds a lot like us. Well, and the corruption there, off the charts. Everybody, even elected official, everybody always cheats on their time. Anyway, let's talk about yawning. This is a story I really wanted to do in tonight's show. It's so contagious, even your dog is catching on. This, according to a new study out, showing dogs truly are a man's best friend because they have the ability to empathize with humans. Larry? My dog is truly this man's best friend. I have Ralphie the Bulldog, and we are simpatico soulmates. <laughs> and if he is calm, I am calm. And if I'm calm, he's calm. So I get the whole yawning at the same time thing. I, you know, I would have picked a bulldog for you. Okay, Marjorie, what are you saying? <laughs> I, I don't know how I feel about mimicking animal behavior or them mimicking you. I, and I'm really hoping this was not a federally funded study. If this is where our taxpayer money is going, I'm a little concerned. But if you've also noticed when you try to feed a baby, people have a hard time actually not mimicking what a baby's mouth does when they feed it. So to pay attention to that, a whole mm. new study we can try out. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Carol? Yeah. Yeah, do dogs will do anything for treats and attention. If you tell them to roll over, they'll roll over. If you open your mouth, they'll open their mouth. I don't think that they're empathizing. I think that they're just hungry. And I think we have to stop <laughs> trying to make dogs people. I mean, th Aww. look, th this is, these are animals that still smell each other's behind. So <laughs> this isn't empathy. This is just, I think, hunger. Yeah, I'm with no, her. not mine, Jerry. Come on.
A little empathy, a little dog love. Where is it? Marjorie, Carol, Larry. Larry, come on the set anytime. We love having you here. I appreciate it. All right, we'll be right back.